Hey District 5170, my name is Adrian kirkapik Doe, and I'm the International Projects Coordinator for the 2020-21 school year. Hi, I'm Helen and I'm the Community Project Coordinator for the 2020-2021 school year. And this is our first ever episode of the Bring to Light podcast, brought to you by Adrian, myself, as well as all of the district project area representatives. The goal for the Bring to Light podcast is to bring to light a lot of the current events and issues related to our community project and international project this year. And we'll be going over and reminding guys of our community project, Combating with Care, as well as our international project, Feeding the Future, throughout these next few episodes. Another reason why we created this podcast is because we realized that there is a need in order to spread more awareness about the projects consistently and also to make sure that we were raising awareness of them in the current news. So bringing up some guest speakers or perhaps even some current events that we think you guys should be aware of. And then also another important mission of our podcast is to educate you guys and to feature some volunteers from across the district. So possibly you guys, possibly district council members, or even volunteers from our organizations that we are partnering with and supporting this year. Today's episode will be first introducing the projects, project representatives, and having a current news segment about the projects. So first off, the international project for this year is called Feeding the Future and and basically, its mission is to provide sustenance for Yemen citizens facing the world's largest humanitarian crisis. Interact 5170 has partnered with World Food Program USA, which is actually a branch of the United Nations World Food Program. It, this organization serves 88 countries, 97 million people, and fundraises $8 billion annually. It's also the world's largest humanitarian organization for hunger and food security. This year, our monetary goal is $50,000. $50,000 correlates to feeding 650 families of five for a month in Yemen. And the way that this food will be provided is through food boxes that the World Food Program provides for the Yemen citizens. Basically, this project is intended to spread more awareness about the Yemen crisis. It's been going on since 2011, and especially with COVID, hunger has only been rising exponentially. So as a district, we're trying to make the most international impact as possible by helping provide food for these citizens, as food has never been a major focus of one of our projects before. Additionally, World Food Program has a large online presence. They recently won the Nobel Peace Prize in October 2020, and they're very established and credible. So we're very excited to work with them and hear from them more in the future, even on this podcast. Thank you so much, Adrian. Um, And now we'll be moving on to our community project, Combating with Care. And the mission for this project is to alleviate the disproportionate effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on marginalized communities in the Bay Area. I think ever since March of this year, we've all seen the disproportionate effects that COVID-19 has had in our community, whether it's through the rising um, homelessness or mental health, it's affected a lot of different issues in our community. And I think the impact that we need to make in order to heal our community also needs to be just as holistic. And that is why I decided to partner with United Way Bay Area, which is an organization that partners with over 200 different nonprofits in the Bay Area that cover a wide range of issues from homelessness to food pantries, to providing clothes and also to providing mental health or economic assistance services. The community project for this year is also split into two phases, recovery and rebuilding. The first phase, recovery, was more focused on addressing the emergency needs of our community. And the second one is related to rebuilding the economic healthiness of our community, such as creating jobs or helping people build skills. And the reason why I split it into these two is also in order to cater to United Way Bay Area that has a variety of different funds. And so the funds from the first semester or the first phase will be going to a fund that focuses more on immediate needs, whereas the second phase will focus on SparkPoint, which is an economic service that they have. Now that we're in the second phase, rebuilding, I think it's really important that we focus on events that are related to rebuilding skills, but that certainly doesn't mean that we can't do anything related to the recovery phase as well. I think the important distinction was mainly for the funds. So that leads us to announcing the service goal and the monetary goal for the projects. The service goal was 30,000 hours and the monetary goal was 
$25,000. And this is across the entire year, regardless of the phase. Another reason why I chose United Way Bay Area is because they're a very well-known and credible nonprofit organization in this area. And they're also a branch of United Way, which is also a very credible nonprofit across the United States. So United Way Bay Area is partnered with some organizations such as the NFL, and they're also sponsored by many corporations such as Texas Instruments and Bank of America. So now we're going to be transitioning into the next section of our podcast, which is introducing the project representatives. This year, we have a group of amazing and dedicated project representatives from across District 5170 that were chosen to represent each area or a group of areas. And they will be serving as liaison between the project coordinators, which is Adrian and I, as well as the rest of the district. So they're here in order to help us raise awareness about the projects and then also to fundraise for our cause. So a few things that we're currently working on include the Valentine's Grams, the podcast, as well as some graphics that we'll be posting on the Instagram. And now we'll be introducing them. So we'd like to ask every project representative to list their pronouns, which areas or area they, they're representing, their school, grade, what they're looking forward to the most, and a fun fact about themselves. Starting with area one. Hello, my name is Matthew. I use they them pronouns and I will be serving as your area one project representative. I am currently a junior at Ames College Prep and I'm looking forward to serving my area once again. And fun fact is I broke my head while dancing to a Taylor Swift song. Hi, my name is Jenny Tran. I go I use she her pronouns and I'm the area two project rep. I go to Castro Valley High School and I'm a junior and I'm looking forward to get to know everyone in this team because they're all amazing. And um, fun fact is I have three dogs. Hi, I'm Anna, I go by she, her. Uh, I'm representing areas three and four. Um, I'm a junior from DHS and the thing I'm most looking forward to is working with these wonderful project representatives. And a fun fact about me is I love dancing. Hi, I'm Jaya. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm also a project representative for areas three and four. I'm a freshman at Dublin High, and I'm looking forward to meeting and getting to know everyone on the team, as well as contributing to the projects more. And one fun fact about myself is that I love drawing and designing. Hi, I'm Eva Payne. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a sophomore at Washington High School. Um, this year, I'm really excited to get Area 5 more involved, and a fun fact about myself is I like books better than movies. Hi, I'm Nicole. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm serving as your Area 5 project representative. Um, I'm a junior at Irvington High School. What I'm looking forward to most is um, working with the rest of the project reps and then also getting our Area 5 more involved. And fun fact about myself is that I was born in Canada. Hi, my name is Jenny, and uh, I'm a representative for Area 6, and I use she, her pronouns. I'm, I'm a sophomore at Independence High School, and I'm looking forward to just bond with you guys and promote our projects this year to my area. And a fun fact about me is that I like anime. Hi, my name is Anvi. I go by she, her pronouns. Um, I'm representing Area 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm a junior at Pioneer High School. I'm really excited to learn more about the district-wide projects and spread awareness. And a fun fact about me is that I'm vegetarian. Hi, I'm Say and I go by she, her. I'm representing seven, eight, nine, and 10 as well. I'm a junior at Pioneer High School and I'm looking forward to the impact we could have on the community and international projects. Hey guys, I'm Serbi Panday. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm representing Area 11. I'm a sophomore at Mission Early College High School, and I'm really looking forward to spreading more awareness about our international and community projects. And a fun fact about me is that I love Thai food. Hi, I'm Jeannie Chan. My pronouns are she, her. I'm representing areas 12 and 13. I'm a junior from Limbrook High School. I'm looking forward to meeting new people and working on new projects. A fun fact is I play two instruments. Hi guys, my name is Preeti. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm representing areas 12 and 13 as well. And I'm a junior at Limbrook High School, and I'm looking forward to just getting to know everyone here, as well as being able to get my 
um, areas more involved in certain projects that we're doing. And a fun fact about me is that I don't like blueberries. So thank you guys for all introducing yourselves. And um, we're super excited to all work with you this year and take our projects to new, new heights this year. Next up is current news around our international project, Feeding the Future, which revolves around the current humanitarian crisis in Yemen, where millions of people are currently facing malnutrition and famine. Since conflict arising in 2015, the population's access to proper nutrition and clean water has rapidly deteriorated. This lack of sustenance has caused an innumerable amount of deaths due to starvation, declaring this as the largest humanitarian crisis in the world. According to the World Food Program, more than 24 million people, around 80% of the population, are in need of humanitarian assistance. The UN World Food Program acts as a lifeline for over 40% of Yemen's population, using ships, cranes, food vouchers, and planes this nonprofit tirelessly works to supply resources to 12 million Yemeni people monthly. In addition to a lack of proper food supply, over 18 million people need access to clean and safe drinking water, according to UNICEF. Due to disruptions in public services, only one third of Yemen's population is connected to a piped water network. These conditions have resulted in widespread diseases such as cholera and AWD. One of the most impacted groups are Yemeni children. Two million children require medical treatment for severe malnutrition, which can affect child development and has had devastating impacts on the physical and mental health of Yemen's youth. Next is our community project, Combating with Care. Combating with Care focuses around deflating problems caused by um, COVID-19. Most likely, everyone has been impacted by this pandemic in some way, whether it's mentally, financially, academically, and of course, health-wise. Millions of people have been hospitalized because of it, and one out of 11 people hospitalized find themselves having to go back to the hospital within two months. In fact, so many people have been hospitalized that the ICU capacity in the Bay Area is at 23% currently. Also, recently, there have been more variants and mutations um, on the rise. Similar to a living thing, viruses mutate because they want to quote unquote, stay alive. One variant has actually been found near us in the Bay Area at a Kaiser Hospital in San Jose. It's unknown if the current vaccine can defeat this, like these variations, but hopefully it does. Also, due to coronavirus, homelessness and food insecurity are currently on the rise and worse than ever before. There are currently 151,000 people in California who do not have a roof above their head, according to the California Healthcare Foundation. The unsheltered people face a disproportionate risk and are more prone to coronavirus. The unemployment rates are drastically increasing where over 21 million Americans have lost their job in this nation. The magnitude of this is even greater than the Great Depression era. On the other hand, senior citizens are not only more susceptible to coronavirus due to their underlying health conditions, they've lost the motivation to live. As the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention mentioned, 78% of people who lost their lives due to COVID-19 were 65 plus. People older than 65 are allowed to get vaccinated as it could take up to five months to vaccinate the entire age group according to the San Francisco Chronicle. In addition, COVID-19 has significantly affected the mental health of our healthcare workers. As more and more have the virus, the more and more healthcare workers need to work in order to take care of their patients. Many workers have become overwhelmed and overworked because of this pandemic, tired of seeing patients dying because of it. According to NBC News and Springer Link, about 93% of healthcare workers are stressed, 86 are experiencing anxiety, 76 feeling burnt out, 75 feeling overwhelmed, and 39 believe that they aren't getting enough emotional support. So thank you so much to the project representatives who helped present information about the community and international projects. We hope that this episode helped educate you more about the projects and get you more inspired to continue serving and fundraising for them for the rest of this semester. Yeah, and that basically wraps up our first episode of our Bring to Light podcast. We'll be releasing each podcast every month. And so stay tuned for the next one. Thank you guys so much for listening and see you next time.